Did you ever wonder how fast your model trains were going in scale miles per hour? Well, over the last year or so, I've combined all my hobbies to make a project to do just that. Let's check it out, look at some of the details, and see what fun we can have. In a part one video of this project about a year ago, I show how I prototyped the circuit, put it on a circuit board, and then installed it under the layout and tested it. Now somewhere in the last year, this revision one circuit board uh, was placed inside of an enclosure that I designed on my 3D printer, and I was gonna be able to clip it in and mount it up under the layout. And although the design worked out perfectly, it turns out that putting these tiny wires in these little screw terminals through these thin slots with a screwdriver turns out to be a major league pain in the ass. And maintenance was not going to be good on this, so I knew I had to rethink this thing. Now it was around about this phase of the project that I designed and 3D printed this enclosure for the seven segment display, this billboard that I was going to mount onto the layout that held the display that showed the speed. So it was pretty neat. I just snapped it together here, designed this all out to make it look like a little scale billboard, ran the wires through it and they'll go down through and attach underneath the layout to the circuit board. And boy did revision two take some effort, but I ended up designing my own circuit board and having it uh, manufactured and printed. Here's a sample. And then I could populate the components on there with the Arduino and reprogram it, put the capacitors on, uh, the resistors and headers and build it out. And of course I had to design and print the requisite 3D enclosure to mount this thing in up under the layout. This was my first ever circuit board design, never used any of the software or process before, and to my surprise, the thing came to life without an issue. What makes the Revision 2 circuit board design so much nicer are these DuPont connector headers. So once I made them here, um, I can just plug in the sensors all at once instead of having to do 8 or 12 individual screw terminals. Here's the connector for the display which is up on the uh, top of the layout. Just plug that in, done with that. And my five volts DC power. Now the way I designed this enclosure, it'll just snap into the top, which is screw mounted up under the layout. And there we go. I can tie up these wires later with some wire ties or connectors. Now, where am I getting the power for my circuit board? Well, a long time ago, I converted a PC power supply to give me some regulated taps to give me 12 volt, 5 volt, etc. And there's plenty of amperage here with protection built in, so that worked out great. And over here at my control panel is my high tech UL approved power switch. Uh, it's just a PC power switch off the front of a computer that turns on that power supply goes up to all the lights on the layout and of course my circuit boards and things like that. Now how this works is as follows. Here's the speed gauge. There's a sensor here in the track and a sensor down here. When it resets it goes to all eights. When something first passes the first sensor it starts recording and then when I come down and pass the second sensor, it says between that point and that point, it's a scale eight miles per hour. Now after that point, it returns to zero because the train will continue to run over it. And then once it's blank for some period of time, it'll reset. And of course, I can come up and trigger this one. Coming this way, it'll wait, it'll wait, it'll wait. That took 7.33 and so on. Let's run a train by after it resets. We are moving. Over. Acknowledge tower out. And then when the train passes both sensors completely, it'll reset. Now I have a condition set in the code. I believe between 50 and 90 scale miles per hour, it will blink slowly 
when it shows the speed. So see it's blinking 59.72 in a slow blink. Now we'll speed it up a little bit. I think I maxed the uh, gen set out on this, but it was uh, like 120 some miles per hour. Yeah, 128, but it's a fast blink over 90 scale miles per hour. And then just slow it down a little bit on this time around. Oh, we're only going 95, but still it's a fast blink. So you can do some neat stuff in the code. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project and explanation. Hope you learned something along the way, or maybe I've inspired you to do your own project like this. In any case, hopefully it was entertaining for you, and thanks for watching.